Saturday evening in State College. Two teams exceeding preseason expectations hit the final stretch of the regular season. Penn State and Johns Hopkins, a top 10 matchup, which should be a really fun one to bring to you on Big Ten Network. Mark Dixon, Jason Ross Jr. Mark, again, two teams exceeding what we thought they would be at this point in the year, which makes this a really fun tilt tonight. You look at 2022, both teams sub-500, missed the NCAA tournament. This year, they've got some players back. they got some transfers that have made a difference. And as you mentioned, both in the top 10, this is a huge game. You mentioned getting some pieces back. Penn State got some key pieces back from injuries that they faced a season ago. T.J. Malone is certainly one of them. He is a guy who has missed the last two seasons, really, if you think about it, with injury. And he leads the team 38 points. He can feed, but his bread and butter is the dodge. And he's got great speed. He's got great strength. Loves to come from behind the cage, turn the corner, and finish. On the opposite side, Jacob Angelus has been so effective this season for Hopkins. He is the leader and the orchestrator of this Johns Hopkins offense. He is a pass-first attackman. Look at the touch, finding Russell Melendez on the backside. Earlier this year against Loyola, Angelus missed the game, and you saw how much he means to this Johns Hopkins offense. Minutes away from this matchup. Penn State huddled up on their home field where they haven't lost this season 4-0 on the home turf. If they were to win today, we'd have three teams at the top of the conference all at 2-1 in conference play. If they were to hypothetically pull that off, it would be Maryland, Hopkins, and Penn State all at 2-1. If Hopkins can win today, then they would keep that sole possession of first place in the conference. Penn State currently at 6-3, number 8 in the latest U.S. ILA poll. On the opposite side, Hopkins 9-3. Again, 2-0 in the Big Ten. First place in the conference at the moment. Number six in that poll. They carry a Big Ten best five-game winning streak into today. Mark certainly plenty on the line today as we venture down these final few games in the regular season. This one will mean a lot standings-wise. Take a peek at the goaltenders that we'll see today for Penn State, one of the best in the conference. Jack Frassian currently has the top save percentage in the Big Ten. And he's a guy who has brought stability and consistency between the pipes for Jeff Tambroni and this Penn State team, something they lacked last year. For Hopkins, Tim Marcille. Great Falls, Virginia native. Making his 12th start this season. Started in the second half of 2021 and really led a run for Hopkins. They went to the Big Ten Championship game, lost to Maryland that year. He has been terrific. Pulled against Michigan, wasn't feeling great, wasn't seeing the ball super well, but he has been a difference maker and the linchpin of a very good, much improved Hopkins defense. Both coaches talked about how important the possession battle would be today. First draw, and a ground ball. Hopkins again in the black today. Penn State in their white with the navy blue trim. And ground ball still available. Ultimately scooped up by the Nittany Lions. And it will get us underway. Tough ground ball by Will Peden. Penn State has two players in this game. Will Peden, number 12, who just picked up that ground ball, and then Ethan Long. Both were originally Hopkins commits, and when they made the coaching change from Dave Petromala to Peter Milliman, both Peden and Long flipped their commitments to Happy Valley. Milliman in his third year with Hopkins. We talked about it yesterday. It's such a small across world. You see those connections around the game and around the conference pretty often. Here's Matt Trainer, one of the Trainer brothers. His brother Jack was 16. Matt, the younger of the two brothers. Penn State coming off a win over Ohio State, 17 to nine. It was a big one for them. The Trainer brothers had a combined six goals in that game, by the way, as they operate here. 25 on the shot clock for the Nittany Lions. TJ Malone will be highlighted in the open. Back to Matt Costin. 15 on the shot clock. Jack Trainer feeds it across. A first attempt denied. This possession will go back to Hopkins. To Marcel, short in stature, but plays beyond his height. Made himself big, makes the save there. Penn State goes in the crease. 
Hopkins with their first clearing opportunity of the evening. And Marcio, 5'7", 160, so like you said, pretty small in stature, but has a great game. Scored a goal this year. <laughs> North Carolina did the 10-man ride, and he stuck it from about 60 yards. It's always a point of pride you take not only into the locker room after the game, but really throughout the rest of your career. Absolutely. And we're getting a look at the Hopkins starting lineup. Matt Collison has been terrific as a freshman. Russell Melendez has been on a hot streak lately as well. That was Melendez who just dished it off to Matt Collison. Proved himself as one of the best young players in the country, Collison. Both seems like the two-man game behind the cage as we'll have a man-up situation coming up here. I think that's going to be a slash against Penn State. You could hear it in the stands. And Hopkins will have the first man-up opportunity of the game. Angelus sneaks inside, and it looks like it's going to be more of a push. You heard some contact, but there you see the defender pushing Angelus into the crease from behind. Looks like Alex Ross was the guilty party there. It's the man-up opportunity for Hopkins. Melendez, as you pointed out there, 17 goals on the season. I don't expect him to be on the doorstep pretty often. Angelus kind of runs that quarterback role. 31 assists on the season. Sixth nationally in that category when it comes to assists per game. Here's Melendez. Hopkins working out of a 2-3-1. Degna whips it wide. Great skip. Skip passes like that really loosen up the defense. And if you can see and skip to the back side, you're going to have a much better chance to score a goal. 22 seconds left on the man-up opportunity. Hopkins trying to strike first chance for Melendez. And they do just that. The skip passes. If you can do this in the man-up, you're going to have a lot of success. I love the patience of Melendez. Look at the skip pass from low to high. And Cullison has got our cannon. But I love how he recognized the Penn State defense coming out to meet him. They don't want 16 bombing away from deep. And he s calmly slots it down to Melendez, who slips it past Frasion. So to your point there, Mark, Matt Collison is a 19-year-old freshman, but the coach has told us he's almost comes off as older than some of the other players. And it's his patience in that moment that really pays dividends for Hopkins. Yeah, he's done a great job this year. He is Canadian. Canadians do seem older sometimes <laughs> for whatever reason. But at a time when Hopkins needed big plays earlier this season, number 16 got the job done. Huge lefty. And when he gets downhill on you, he is tough to stop. Collison is eight straight multi-point games. Certainly wouldn't be surprised if he tacks on one more today to extend that streak to nine. Melendez being shattered here by Mark Sickler. And Melendez once more. Sickler was right on him. Didn't matter. Melendez with the bounce shot. He's already got two goals. It's going to be easier said than done. But I think that's one Frasion is going to wish he had back. Melendez is a right-hand player. And he has a short stick matchup. Take nothing away from this shot. Actually, that placement of the bouncer, look at him place it just outside the crease. High bouncer. I think Frasion thought it was going to stay a little bit lower when it kicked up. It surprised him. Nice shot, Melendez. Penn State will have the possession now. Down to nothing early on their home turf where they haven't lost yet this season. 4-0 at home. 6-3 on the campaign. Penn State picked up that first Big Ten win of the season against Ohio State after a close loss to Maryland. Jeff Tambroni had a heart-to-heart -heart with his team. The Monday after that loss to Maryland, said they reacted really well. We're out in the practice field under their own volition in the film room, really reviewing a lot, and that paid off against Ohio State. They're down 2-0 here. 
Ground ball available, scooped up by T.J. Malone, the grad student from Pennsylvania. Westchester native, surveys the situation. 35 on the shot clock for Malone, tries to sneak it in, and he's able to do so. He's saying that. Uh, goal mouth. Goal mouth, okay. Goal mouth violation on T.J. Malone. I'm going to assume before we see the replay that Malone got in there, got the shot off clean, was not fouled, and under his own volition landed in the goal mouth. That was a nice move by T.J. Malone, but got to stay out of that ice cream cone right there, Jason. Do we always like to stay out of ice cream cones? That, that's a difficult task. Have, have you seen me? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I, I do not. But, you know, that goal mouth is the uh, no-fly zone. No trespassing if you're an offensive player. Pesco down the alley, then right in front, sends it wide. It's a no-no if you're on the field. Absolutely. Hopkins off to the 2-0 start. Both goals from Russell Melendez. Long bid denied by Frassian. Nice save there. Now can Penn State clear facing this Hopkins ride. Ground ball scooped up there. Ultimately, Penn State is able to clear now in the transition. Yeah, nice job by McVicker. Good ride by Hopkins. They get him to cough it up. He kept his composure, pick up the ground ball, and gave it back to his goalie. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout for Penn State. They're taking an early timeout. I think Def Tambroni feels like his team is a little disheveled right now, wants to settle them down. Here is the goal that was taken away. He ducks underneath the check, T.J. Malone does, so there's no push, and his own energy carries him into the goal mouth. No goal, Hopkins up, 2-0. Look at Penn State head coach Jeff Tambroni, 13th season. Let's see if his crew can get something rolling offensively here. Matt Trainer cruises around the cage. I like to operate in that two-man game again behind the cage with picks and whatnot. We'll see if they do that. Here's Matt Costin, moving and grooving, backs it back out. Kevin Winkoff, 48 in white for Penn State, has been a really good addition to the roster this season. One of four transfers that have played a key role in the turnaround for Nittany Lyon lacrosse. Winkoff has been terrific. Patrick Deans not playing for Hopkins today due to injury. Carson Brown, number 11 in black, is their LSM one. On shot, nullified. Looks like it went off the leg there of Alex Mazzone. Seven on the shot clock for Penn State. Matt Trainer three on the shot clock. See if he can get something off in time. He didn't. Hopkins catches a break there. A lot of stick swinging against Trainer instead of moving their feet. Trainer got to a good spot. Marcio makes the stop. Short time on that shot clock, but if I'm Hopkins majority of that possession they did a good job of moving their feet and they gotta they gotta keep that up to here tonight this is a very athletic very quick Penn State offense Melendez is thinking about an early hat trick already shots favoring Hopkins six to one McDermott flips it over to Ryan Evans Forced to drift back out by the watch of Jack Posey. Jacob Angelus again runs that quarterback role. 32 assists on the season. And so good for Hopkins. Hopkins being very patient. I thought that was a good shot opportunity for Angelus. Degnan Hiltz hit shots when he has him. Leading this team in goals. That one simmers wide. I think it nicked the pipe because the referees did signal for a shot clock reset. So Hopkins now with 60 seconds left to shoot. This second midfield unit has been very productive for the Blue Jays. This man with the ball right here, 49, Ryan Evans. Several key goals this season. And then when you look at Brooks English, he's come up big over the last month of the season. And Casey McDermott missed five or six games with an injury. Him back in the lineup makes this unit tougher. Save from Frassi in there. 
They're able to deny Evans. Evans, English, McDermott, that second midfield line for Hopkins. Here's Evans again. A hard hit near him. We'll have a man up opportunity on the horizon here. Yeah, I think they're going to call unnecessary roughness as Jack Posey blew up Casey McDermott as he tried to set the pick. And Penn State touches up, and here comes the second man up opportunity for Hopkins. Looks like it's going to be a cross check on Posey. Posey putting together an All American season. Here is the pick. And Posey lifts those arms, hands spread, and levels Casey McDermott. The rule is, if you see the pick, you can run through the pick. You just can't cross-check, illegal body check, unnecessary roughness, the pick. So if Posey would have just run through that with his shoulder in a regular fashion, it would not have been a foul. But because of the chin music, Hopkins goes man up. Dead on with it. This Hopkins team leads the all-time series 13 to 4. And they have ended Penn State season the last two years. Mark, and that's something that is certainly on the minds of every player on this field for if you're a Nittany Lion right now. And Jeff Tamburni said, you know, something that we don't want to harp on too much. We don't want to think emotionally. We want to think analytically. But it's certainly there in the back of our minds. They don't want to use the word revenge. Yeah, motivation. I think is is more the the word that Jeff Tambroni used with us. And when we asked the question, you could see it in his reaction that it stung. You know that Hopkins, the last two seasons, Penn State's last game has been against Johns Hopkins because they've ended their season in the Big Ten tournament. So definitely looking to get that monkey off their back, but more importantly, just another high quality win to help their metrics, the RPI strength the schedule. Penn State has already beaten Yale, they beat Penn, they beat Cornell. I, they should have beat Maryland. Maryland got four goals out of their short stick D middies, and Penn State committed a lot of unforced errors in that game. And credit Maryland for making plays, but Penn State, you walked off there being like, yeah, this team's for real. That was a 13-10 loss to Maryland, but then bounced back with a 17-9 win against Ohio State. The shot clock winds down there. Hopkins is playing great defense. And Jeff Tambroni wants the call that Jack Posey got flagged for as Hopkins ran through a pick there. But again, I, I think they ran through it clean versus the, the cross-checking motion that Posey made. Hopkins only one shot. I'm sorry, Penn State only one shot in the game. So not only is Hopkins playing really strong defense, they're not even giving Penn State anything to shoot at been an excellent start for the Blue Jays it, you and I watched both coaches meet with the officials as they always do before the game sorting out how things might be called Tamboni maybe didn't like that last one yeah and, and it's and it's communication between the refs and the officials throughout the game that's so important to having a healthy interaction a healthy contest between two high-level lacrosse programs and you got to imagine, Jason, the conversation around the uh, lacrosse landscape here today was, what about the color of my team's gloves? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Meanwhile, the conversation is about Russell Melendez, who has a hat trick and the first three goals of the evening for this Hopkins team that's off to a hot start on the road. And he scored them all three different ways. One was taking a feed and scoring down low. One was sweeping across the face of the defense left-handed from about 15 yards and this one look at the little head nod that he gives Frasion and Frasion dropped his stick when he saw the head the head drop down and then he kept his stick high and whistles it past the ear of Frasion we spoke to coach Millen about Russell Melendez called him a, a unique piece gifted physically and skilled with both hands we're seeing how dynamic he is in the early stages of this game. He, up until late, had been a hot and cold player. He'd give you three goals, then double donuts, then four goals, then double, you know, very inconsistent. He's been on a tear as of late.
and Melendez was a guy that you watch play in the fall for the Blue Jays, and you're like, okay, he makes this team different with his speed, with his skill, his athleticism, and I think what the Hopkins faithful saw in the fall, we're now getting a full dose of that on a weekly game-to-game -game basis. And a key part of a Big Ten best five-game winning streak at the moment for Hopkins. Up 3-0 on the road. Jack Schrader trying to change that down the alley. He goes. Excellent save there from Tim Marcille. Yeah, if this was Penn State a year ago, down 3-0 like this, you'd be like, this is a real uphill battle for Penn State. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but this is a group that's explosive and high-powered. So this three-goal deficit, if they can get their act together and start making plays, they're, they're going to be able to get back in this game. And with an extra man opportunity coming up, this is a prime opportunity. T.J. Malone took the worst of that to earn the extra man opportunity here for the Nittany Lions. Looks like T.J. Malone just got brained with a slash right there. Oof. Oh. You ever been hit in the back of the head like that? Oh, no, no. I <laughs> don't wish to relate. Well, he's back out on the field and operating with this man-up unit that's been the best in the Big Ten. They have the most man-up goals on the season of any Big Ten team. See if they can tack on another one that kind of feels much needed right now to get them rolling here. Wink off. Had intentions that time for Ethan Long. It looked like an, uh, a situation of you zag, I zag. That was a great skip pass, but Ethan Long didn't look like he was ready for it. Looked like he actually moved toward the crease and out of the path. Yeah. Maybe, you know, trying to shoot it before it was in a stick, but look at the ride. Nice defensive play, trying to turn it into offense for the Nittany Lions. Jeb Brenfleck couldn't settle down. The ball turned into a ground ball and ultimately scooped up by Hopkins. Killing time off the man up clock that you see is at 10 seconds now. 90 seconds left in this opening quarter. Shots favoring Hopkins 11 to 3, all three goals from Russell Melendez, who has hit the 20 goal mark on the season thanks to this hat trick. Penn State with their fifth turnover of the game. Hopkins now with their fourth. Penn State back in transition. Malone dropped it off. Opens up for Malone in front. The fake and the shot that doesn't turn into a goal. Another save from Marcel. Highway robbery. Tim Marcel has been a difference maker for this Johns Hopkins lacrosse team. Many people thought he should have been the starter last year. He gets the opportunity again in 2023, and he is playing at a very high level. It's his 12th start of the season, and it's been a dandy so far. The beautiful save from Tim Marcel. You have to love the patience of the Penn State offense, moving it around for the best shot. And this is TJ Malone, the sky whammy, big stick fake. And Marcel, look, he bit, but he's athletic enough and quick enough to get his stick down. So he matched stick on stick, even though his body and his feet left the earth. He still matched stick on stick and is able to stone Malone on the doorstep. Just robbed him while in the air. As you mentioned, the feet and the body left the earth. There remains 3 nothing thanks to that save from Marcio. 50.4 to go in this opening quarter. Talked about how important of a game this is for both teams. Again, Hopkins, if they win, they keep that first place all to themselves. Penn State trying to create what would be three teams at 2-1 and one atop there with Maryland and Hopkins. But right now, it's all about just this moment for Penn State trying to climb uphill here. Yeah, so Rutgers gets their first win yesterday, overtime against Michigan. Maryland come from behind, overtime victory over Ohio State last night. Hopkins with the win becomes number one all by itself. All six teams will make the tournament. And you'll have three, six, and four, five play in a quarterfinal. And then you'll have the semifinals and the championship. There's a week between the quarterfinals and the finals with the semifinals on that. You know, so, so Saturday quarterfinals, Thursday semifinals, Saturday championship game. Teams at this stage of the year, Jason, would love to be one two to get a week of rest another week of preparation got get their guys healthy at this stage of the year you mentioned it earlier guys are beat up guys are nicked up 
Anytime you can get some extra time to heal and feel better, that's a bonus. Your favorite time of the year. We're fired up for it. Absolutely. 50 degree day in State College with spring on the horizon. 70 degree temperatures expected this upcoming week throughout the state of Pennsylvania. 3 nothing start for Johns Hopkins half a minute to go in this opening quarter. Interesting timeout for Hopkins. I'm not sure they necessarily needed that. They weren't really in trouble up 3 nothing, but I think they want to play for the last shot here in the first quarter if it's not there off of a primary and not give Penn State an opportunity to get on the board. Every moment calculated at this stage of the season. Here's Melendez looking for room to fire. And that is number four of the opening quarter for Russell Melendez. I think the timeout paid off. We mentioned Jacob Angelus missing the Loyola game earlier in the season. So did Russell Melendez. And look at the little fake that he throws. Brings it back, and it threw off Frasion. So Melendez has confused Frasion on three of his four goals. And that's just confidence and poise. Getting the goalie to move before you take the shot. That'll do it for an opening quarter of play that sees Hopkins go up 4 nothing on the road in this pivotal late season conference matchup. It has been all Melendez going for the coveted Holly Farms player of the game. Gets to the middle of the field, sticks it, and that one. A thing of beauty. This one on short time. It's been the Russell Melendez Show in State College. The Cross and the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Pretty shots of the Penn State campus. On a beautiful Saturday evening, Russell Melendez, 31 in black, has been the story of the day so far. The only goal scorer tonight, Melendez is the first Hopkins player with four goals in a quarter since Joey Epstein had five in a second quarter against Towson in 2022 last year. So Melendez with the hot hand and Jack Hawley, 26 in black. He is a ground ball magician, takes every wing on the faceoffs for the Blue Jays and just seems to find a way to the ball. One of the captains for Hopkins as well. Jack Hawley, such a good presence for that team. On and off the field, his uncle Dave is a former Hopkins coach. Hawley now a grad student. Hopkins goes back to work offensively again here. Had a potent first quarter that led to four goals. Again, all off the stick of Russell Melendez. Operating behind the net, Brendan Grimes. Get a whistle call here, and potentially man up scenario. Grant Hall is limping yeah. off for Penn State. He's their top short stick D midi. And I'd have to look at the replay. I think we might have interference on Penn State as a Hopkins player was knocked into the crease. That's what killed the play. Alex Ross, 32nd. Technical foul for interference. Yeah, so interference on Alex Ross of Penn State. That's his second foul yep. of the game. Might want to take it easy on the eye black. <laughs> Were you an eye black kind of guy? One stripe under each eye. The, the way that these guys use eye black these days to look like the ultimate warrior is stupid, <laughs> in my opinion. You didn't overdo it back no, in the day. No, you, you, you used it for the purpose, and that was to help you see. You know, you didn't use it to uh, to look like, uh, you know, you're ready to go into a steel cage match. <laughs> what about you? Eye black guy? You know, I, I kind of like the look of it. Do it's you like, like you're going into war a little bit, okay. you know? Okay, all right. I'm, Mark Dixon, not an eye black guy. I'm getting a sense of, of uh, how you like to intimidate, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't intimidate you. <laughs> Put the eye black on. <laughs> Garrett Degnan has been pretty intimidating for opposing teams this season. 26 goals. All the talk, though, so far been about Russell Melendez for Hopkins. Shots favoring the Blue Jays 13-4. to 
early stages, second quarter. Penn State a little rattled so far. It's been really a complete performance for Hopkins. And that was Degnan right on cue. Denied, though, by Frassian. That was a great save. Stepped to the ball, kicked it out. Penn State just, they have not been able to get into a groove offensively. Some penalties, bad turnovers, and good Hopkins defense. And, and, and Tim Marcille with that incredible save. Jeff Tamburini talked about really trying to avoid defending multiple possessions. So far, Hopkins has been scooping up the ground balls and winning the hustle plays. Here's Angelus, dips it off for... And it was Degnan right out in front. Save made from our, from, beg your pardon, it was Frassian on the save. Looks like he hit him right in the face mask. Yeah. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Degnan with the quick stick. Got Frassian right in the kisser. So they survived the man up opportunity. Now trying to get on the board here in the second quarter. Here's Winkoff again, who's been such a good addition and has transi transitioned so well into a Penn State uniform this season. One of four transfers. Got multiple key pieces back from injuries as well, including TJ Malone, who's been so good. Matt Trainer as well. There's another save from Marcel. Marcel standing tall. He's seeing the ball well. Struggled two weeks ago against Michigan in really bad weather. Was replaced by Caracciolo, the transfer from Bryant, did a really nice job. But then Marcio came back last week against Rutgers, had a good game and another Hopkins win, and he's playing well thus far tonight. Mark, we saw his feed there to start the clearance as well, and a pretty good transition, fairly smooth for Johns Hopkins. Is it kind of an underrated aspect for a goaltender to be able to make that pass? Um, it, it's a very necessary component to, to clear the ball, and to clear the ball smartly. You know, if you can get it up and out, to create transition and put pressure on the defense and get early offense, that's critical. But the second part of that is just being smart with your outlet passes, taking care of the ball, putting your guys breaking out in a position to catch and get out of harm's way. Because if you don't do it that way, turning it over and giving second chance possessions really, really puts a lot of strain on your D. That second midfield line that you've liked for Hopkins back out there. Evans English McDermott trying to add on to this lead. It's already 4 0. Ground ball scooped up by Penn State. Yeah, good job by Penn State defense. Brooke English kind of ran into no man's land there. Gets depossessed, and we'll see if Penn State can start putting it together. TJ Malone receives this feed. Talked about him in our open. There's five shots so far for the Nittany Lions. State team that when we saw them last year going into the final day of the regular season were at three and nine. They totally flipped things around this year. Trying to continue that on their home field where they haven't lost yet this season. Six and three on the year overall. Number eight in the latest polls. Sets up a top ten matchup for us this evening. And despite that record last year, Penn State played hard yes, they every did. single game every single game out. Now they get those pieces back. Some transfers. Here's an opportunity that opens up, but another beautiful save for Marcel. Wow. He has been excellent. Kick save and a butte. Quick as a hiccup with the foot out. What a stop by Tim Marcel. Having himself a great night. It's a stonewall of Penn State on a couple of really good chances and looks. Jonathan Pesco, Ontario native. Pesco grinds Collison in that first midfield line for Hopkins. A lot of beef, a lot yep. of height, a lot of <laughs> just big guys. Pesco, 6'4", 200 pounds. I feel like the eye black would kind of suit him. Is that overdue a little bit? Yeah. He could do it and pull it off. Here he is again. Ops to back up. As Degnan to his left, 40 in black. Pesco right down the alley, shot, and he scores!
Confidence is brewing right now for Hopkins. Mark, I don't know if it's the eye black or the game plan. I'm going to go with the latter and just <laughs> making plays defensively and now offensively. Peshko, watch this pick set by Ma Matt Collison. This is an excellent pick. And Peshko does a great job of running his defender right off the hip of number 16 in black. Gets down the alley and is able to slink it past Frasion. Penn State. A little bit of danger zone time here. Three nothing. I'm like, yeah, you know, these guys can come back. Four nothing. No need to panic. Five nothing. And the fact that they've only been able to get four shots on goal and haven't been able to solve Marcel yet. This is a big possession for the Nittany Lions. Like you said, maybe last year it feels like a really, really uphill climb for Penn State. This year has felt different, but Marcel has been so good in this game. They take it. And finally, capitalize. It's Matt Trainer, the younger brother of Jack Trainer, getting Penn State on the score sheet. A much needed goal. Will Peden draws the double. And I like how Trainer just set his feet, let it rip, and delivers a dart to the upper 90. Matt Trainer, don't like the eye black. Love the shot. You do love one part of <laughs> the ladder. That part, shot yeah. was terrific. I mean, that was a smooth stroke with pace and placement. It's a special shot. And thus far in the game, that's what Penn State needed to solve Tim Marcel. Another piece of good news talking to Jeff Tambroni this week, Jason. Remember, he told us. He was worried about the face-offs. Even though Hopkins only faces off around 50, 51 percent, they use different guys, and they're gritty and tough. So far, the Nittany Lions leading that face-off battle 6-2. Now it's time for them to convert those chances into goals. Hopkins has been able to force seven Penn State turnovers. Though here's Jack Trainer back to wink off. Can they keep this momentum brewing? Matt Trainer took a tumble there, then re-emerges and gets it from Winkoff. I like Winkoff. Really do. Very mature. And Trainer once again. His second in as many shots. Matt Trainer answering the call. Watch him get leverage, soaks up two checks, keeps his feet moving, gets to the middle of the field, and five holes to Marcel through the wickets. We saw him with his feet set, now we've seen him on the run. Matt Trainer, two gigantic tallies for Jeff Tambroni's Nittany Lions. Has 24 goals on the season now, he's sophomore. So Russell Melendez has four of the five Hopkins goals. And all two of these quick Penn State goals to answer back have come from Matt Trainer. Yeah, possession again. Love the matchups here. Scott Smith, he's a gritty defender, yep. very tough. Mazone, a little bit more of the finesse guy, number six. And Zulik is the guy, is the glue guy. He's the one that holds them all together. Low-key goon, number 44 in black. He will crush you if you come into his neighborhood. Matt Trainer goes across. This is corralled by his brother Jack. Now TJ Malone curls around. Out in front, shot, they score! Looked like Kyle Aldrich. Panzermonium. The crowd is woken up. The Penn State Nittany Lions, three in a row. Look at this silky smooth feed from TJ Malone. That's beautiful. Little flip feed across the field, and Aldridge, feet set, target attained, missile delivered. 
Lacrosse is such a game of runs. 5-0 start for Hopkins. Three straight now for Penn State unanswered to claw their way right back into this. Yeah, Matt Trainer taking things and in matters into his own hands. And now Aldridge. That feed from TJ Malone, that was beautiful. Didn't have a ton of pace on it, but just the, the location of it. The faceoff trend that you were watching continues in favor of Penn State. Eight to two now, Mark. Well, it, it, lacrosse is such an emotional game. In addition to the talent and the physicality and, and Penn State right now, they are feeling it. And Tim Marcel's rattled. Make it a 4-0 run now. That's Mark Sickler with the latest for the Nittany Lions. And the crowd is hyped up in State College. Sickler is the Swiss Army knife of this Penn State lacrosse team. During his career, he's played attack. He's been an offensive midi. Now he's a defensive midi, but he's allowed to stay on when Penn State gets possession because of shots like that. Just finds a soft spot in the Hopkins D. Penn State recognizes the opportunity for early offense. And Tim Marcio, after being sparkling early on, now struggling four consecutive shots for the Penn State Nittany Lions have found their way into the back of the net. Possession again for Penn State here. And Jeff Tembroni likes to keep us guessing as to where Mark Sickler will be position-wise. Showcases his offensive ability there to make this just a one-goal lead for Hopkins. John Hop Josh Hopkins jumped out to a 5-0 lead at four straight from Russell Melendez. But the momentum has totally shifted on this 4-0 run for Penn State. Been a quick burst, too. Thanks in large part to the possession. Faceoff's now 9-2. Oh, they're going off the bar. Now you're watching Penn State shooting from up top. Sometimes the best friends of a goalie is the pipe. That's what happened on that particular occasion. Trainer back in, and remember he scored a couple of quick ones. Goals number 23 and 24 on the season for him to ignite this quick comeback for Penn State. Possession of Hopkins here. Moving pick called against the Nittany Lions. Penn State coming off the 17-9 win over Ohio State. That was their first Big Ten win of the season. As you can hear and see the crowd standing up, making their voices felt a bit more than we heard in the early stages with the momentum rising for Penn State. Meanwhile, Hopkins coming back trying to answer. Degnan, save from Frasion. This has been about, what, three, three and a half minutes since Hopkins has had a possession. Good opportunity for Degnan there, but watch Frasion. Just stand his ground. Jackson Raposo, short stick D midi. Peter Millman told us this week that we might see him at some point with a pole in his hand due to Patrick Deans not being available. There, Hopkins running with Carson Brown and Nick Kaufman, but to give them a little bit more depth, number 20 in black may pick up a pole before this is all said and done. Been fun to watch the resilience of this Penn State team. You mentioned last season kind of found ways to lose games at time, but this year they're finding ways to be resilient and in this case stay in it and come back to trim this Hopkins lead down to a goal. That bid simmers wide and possession will stick with Hopkins here. You see the hustle play. I like how Penn State has picked up their energy. They came out a little flat and now they've picked up the energy and Hopkins has been counterpunched. Let's see if the Blue Jays can settle down and get another one. Wow. They answer back. Get the lead back up to two. Just a flick of the wrist. Beautiful shot from Russell Melendez. And this is Dylan Bauer, number seven. He will be on a pitch count tonight. He's missed the last couple of games. He just cruises up from behind the cage. And I felt like Penn State created some offense right there for Hopkins with maybe an unnecessary slide. You leave Melendez, and he takes it with the worm burner, fifth on the night. 
Got five of the six Hopkins goals. Melendez had a four goal game against Michigan prior to Hopkins' last win over Rutgers. So two out of his last three games now, he's got at least four goals. And we approach the dwindling stages of this opening half. And it looks like Penn State switched the matchup too. Jack Posey was on Jacob Angelis, and now he is on Russell Melendez. Posey, a guy not only probably a shoe in for all conference honors, but All American as well. Jack Posey has one Big Ten Player of the Week award this season. Virginia native, a senior. Coming out in front is Malone. And now Penn State answers right back. Malone, great shake and great burst, especially behind the cage. When you're at a standstill, no one goes from zero to 60 better in the Big Ten Conference than number seven in Happy Valley. He just took Scott Smith, a terrific defender, and a guy who will probably be all-conference in his own right, and made him look like a traffic cone. Malone's such an excellent finisher on the inside. You see, you can get this ground ball possession again to Penn State. Off the hop here, they come Malone again, big shot, and he scores! T.J. Malone's 22nd of the season. Penn State is starting to turn these face-off wins into pay dirt. We watch Malone's speed and athleticism. Now we're going to see his smarts and his stick skill. Ducks underneath the defense of Scott Smith. Increases his angle by tiptoeing the crease. Throws a couple stick fakes, gets Marcial off his line, and then puts it into the net. It was once a 5-0 lead for Johns Hopkins. Is now a tie game at six apiece in this top 10 matchup with 2-10 to go in the opening half. Prompts to Hopkins timeout. Yeah, I wasn't comfortable when it got to 5-0 for Penn State, but boy, did they respond in a hurry. And they've just kept the foot on the gas. Hopkins trying to catch their breath, much like Penn State was. You know, maybe about, what, 15 minutes ago in real time? And look at the face-off advantage again. That graphic was just up 11-2 for Hopkins. That is making them play a ton of defense here in the second quarter. Putting a lot of pressure on that Blue Jay defense and all of a sudden Tim Marseal is under siege. He's got four saves. Frasian has six. But Marseal, help me out Jason, I don't think he's made a save during this six goal Penn State run. He had the pipe shot, right? But I think all four of those saves, he has not made a save after these six straight goals by Penn State. It doesn't feel like it with how quickly this Penn State avalanche has arrived. Those first couple from Matt Trainer were in the blink of an eye, and since then, momentum has really shifted in favor of the Nittany Lions. Yeah, that, that face-off total really jumping out off the page. 11-2 to two in favor of Penn State. Make it 12 to 2. Well, now you got Naruski out for blue, for the Blue Jays. So Hopkins has used three different face-off men. Jack Trainer over there. Trying to scoop that up. And they'll keep it. Possession to Penn State. Matt Trainer again at the first two to start this run. Now Penn State has the lead on their mind. We approach the final 90 seconds of this opening half. T.J. Malone so crafty in behind the cage. Will Peden behind the Malone pick there. Those two with the two-man game operating. Dangerous feed out of the reach there. And over top the stick of the intended target, Jack Trainer. Not a bad look, just a little bit of a careless delivery. If you want to whip an underhand pass, 
no matter what level you're playing at, you got to make sure it's on point. And Hopkins is sloppy in their own right. Mm -hmm. Gave it right back. Wow, that's just a dumb foul by Brett Martin. It was late. That's, that's just not smart. Winkoff went down, shot goes wide. Man up opportunity on the horizon here for Penn State. The emotions getting the better of Brett Martin. He's a tough player. He's an excellent player. And this is not a typical Brett Martin play. I mean, that's right in the middle of the field for everyone to see. Now Hopkins will be a, a man down. Penn State again so good on the season in these scenarios. 0 for 3 so far this evening. And they gave him unnecessary roughness. So that'll be a minute penalty. Hopkins man down for up to 60 seconds. Essentially will consume the remainder of this second quarter. Winkoff. TJ Malone. Back to Winkoff. Now Jack Trainer. He dish it around. Lane opens up and they take advantage. And Penn State has the lead thanks to Jack Trainer. Marcia was a brick wall in the first quarter and few minutes of this game. And Penn State, give them credit. They have figured out how to shoot on Hopkins' very talented netminder. The bench loves it. That skip pass again on the extra man. So effective. Hopkins, they just need to they need to collect themselves. They need to settle down. The timeout. But you know, the timeout I thought would help. Penn State is not allowing them to get comfortable. But a huge face-off win for Naruski. That is gigantic. And see if Hopkins can answer back to try to tie. If they don't, what do you think conversation is like coming up here for Coach Milliman and his Hopkins team? Hey, look, let's just, let's just, you know, take a breath. Let's take a breath. Let's settle down. They know they can score. Let's just, let's get after it this next 30 minutes. Hopefully they can get one here, tie it up, and give them some momentum going into the locker room. Jacob Angelus was looking for Pesco out in front. Couldn't find him. Again, it was a 5-0 start to this game for Johns Hopkins. Russell Melendez has five of their six, but Penn State roars back. A 12-3 face-off advantage for the Nittany Lions has propelled what is a 7-6 lead. Their first lead of the game carries us into the half. Again, a 7-6 lead for Penn State. Welcome in Penn State head coach Jeff Tambroni. Well, coach, what an ending to the half for your group. We talked about the resilience from last year to this season. What do you attest to the resilience we've seen so far in this game? You know, I'm proud of the way the guys fought back. I don't think we got off to a great start, obviously, by by the uh, notion of the scoreboard. But Johns Hopkins did a great job at both ends. They were making it really difficult for us in, in our offensive end. And, they were being very efficient in, in their offensive end. And, you know, I think Chase Mullins gave us a, a real opportunity in there to have a few more possessions, which we needed. And guys started uh, to see the ball go in. Their goalie was doing a great job. And I think once we started gaining some confidence and energy, um, it, it started changing tides. So we got to do a good job of just, just trying to keep that going in the second half. You mentioned Tim Marcel and, and his uh, ability, especially in that first quarter, to make saves. What did you guys change, if anything, shooting-wise to find success? Yeah, you know, we, I don't think we said anything other than just stay confident. We thought we were getting some good looks. He was making some great saves, and, and sometimes that's just the way it is. He's a really talented goalie, and I felt like our guys needed to just, kind of, you know, believe in themselves. Sometimes when you see that first ball go in, it changes everybody's mindset. So Matty Trainer's goal, I think, just changed the, the, the complexity of our, our shooting, and, and thankfully some of those went in the second quarter. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Good luck in the second half. Great. Thanks, guys. Well, again, it was a 5-0 start for Hopkins, thanks to Russell Melendez. But Penn State flips the script, and as Jeff Tambroni mentioned, changing the complexity of this matchup. 7-6, Penn State lead.
7-6, Penn State leads it. We welcome in Johns Hopkins head coach Peter Middleman. Coach, great start for your team today. They answer with a run. What's the key to bouncing back at the early stages of this eight early stages of the second half? Uh, we're gonna need some ground balls. We gotta get possessions through uh, through ground balls right now, and most of them are coming off the faceoff, so that's I think the biggest difference right now. Any adjustments you can see being made, coach, to uh, give yourself an opportunity to win some of those uh, faceoffs, maybe make it more of a 50-50 ground ball battle. I think we're going to go with Matt Naruski in the second half here. Um, we'll see how he's doing, but uh, I mean, the biggest factor is we just got to focus. We lost a little focus. We got uh, a casual, and and, uh, and this team's good. They came right back at us. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Good luck in the second half. Thank you, guys. That's a, a big development. Matt Naruski missed the first half of the season, came in. Provided a spark against the University of Virginia a few weeks ago, a loss for Johns Hopkins. And we'll see if he can ignite this faceoff unit in the second half. And right there, that's a difference being made. He created a 50 50 ground ball, gave Mazzone an opportunity to come in and make a play. And Penn State, they're going to win this faceoff. They come up with possession, but they had to work for it. And prior to that, Life had been a little bit too easy for Chase Mullins. Naruski, a Massachusetts native, entered today 5 of 12 in faceoffs on the season. And here comes Penn State. Matt Trainer flips it back in relatively stylish fashion to Jack Trainer. Now Matt Costin, Penn State again in the white uniforms today with the navy blue trim. Hopkins sporting their black uniforms on defense here. That shot goes high. And over top, Tim Marcille, who was superb in the early stages of the game, but was just under duress, really thanks in large part to that face-off number that heavily favored Penn State in the second quarter. Now they've got possession again here, but trying to scoop it up as that pass went high and over the reach of Matt Trainer. so Hopkins will regain the possession. Yeah, over and back violation. Once the shot clock hits 60 seconds, that midfield line becomes... Like the Bermuda Triangle, ball can't go in it or you'll lose it. Hopkins catches a break on the turnover. Now they can try to get back into a rhythm on the offensive end. Remember, Hopkins has ended Penn State season in the Big Ten tournament each of the last two seasons. So Peter Milliman, head coach for Hopkins, told his team, hey, if you're not fired up, they certainly are for this matchup. We've seen Penn State's emotions really come out and be controlled well as that skips by Frasione in the midst of this comeback for the Nittany Lions. And a little, you know, Coach Milliman just talked about Hopkins being casual. That was a little casual on the run out for the Blue Jays. Heady play by number 24, Kyle Aldridge, beating the Jays to the end line. But again, sloppy turnover for Ohio State. What is it about the uh, the end to our left here at Panzer Stadium in the shadow of the Bryce Jordan Arena, which is in the shadow of Beaver Stadium? It's real. I mean, what is it about that end? It's a beautiful multi-facility setup. Perhaps a little intimidating. Meanwhile, 7-6 lead for Penn State. Hopkins operating again here. You know the possession battle will be so big entering today. It's favored Penn State. There's a bank shot. And it kissed off the post. Tough defense by Grant Hawes. We saw him limp off in the first quarter. Glad he's able to keep playing. A ton of mutual respect between both of these coaching staffs. Coach Milliman told us, uh, you know, Tambroni is as good of a coach there is, and he feels their offense looks like a well-oiled machine. It's efficient and it's quick. That's what we've seen out of Penn State so far, and they've gotten that tempo rolling. And defense on film, in the words of Coach Milliman, he said it looks much improved for Penn State, too. Been tough to clear against Penn State this season for any team. Meanwhile, Hopkins goes back to work offensively. Melendez, he has five of the six Hopkins goals. Scored the first four. Melendez again denied at that time by Frasion. Good save by Frasion. And you, you mentioned Tambroni and Milliman. Both will forever be linked. Former coaches at Cornell. Tambroni, of course, leading the Big Red. 
to a national championship game appearance and Pierre Milliman had the opportunity to coach Jeff T. And when the 2020 season was shut down due to COVID, Cornell was playing as well as anyone in the country at that time. Penn State beat Cornell earlier this season, one of just two teams to do that this season. Super emotional for Jeff Tambroni. Only the second time he's been back to Ithaca since he left the Big Red program to take over at Penn State. And not only is it emotional to go back where he coached, but a young man, George Boyardi, died on Shokoff Field in 2004. And Jeff said, going back, always brings back memories of George and the tragedy that happened. And it's uh, always a tough trip. Tambroni now in his 13th year with Penn State, 2019 Big Ten Coach of the Year. Group has had such a turnaround this year. He says it's been miles when it comes to maturity that this group has versus last season. Talked about the off-season additions via transfers that have really helped out as well. And some faces returning after significant injuries a season ago. And it's reflected in their 6-3 and three record. Went 3-11 and 11 a season ago. They're 4-0 on this field. Hopkins wants to change that. They tie the game. Garrett Degnan's team leading 27th of the season. It starts with defense and Tim Marcille making a first save in a long time. And the payoff at the other end is big number 40. Time, room, bullseye. Beautiful job, Garrett Degnan. That is a huge goal for the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. Maybe more importantly than the goal is that save by Marcel. That was a big stop to try to get his confidence back up, get him back into a rhythm. Certainly showed some confidence early. A key saves. He's really under duress in that second quarter, but his team ties the game up seven apiece. I've had some tight games around Big Ten lacrosse over the last uh, 24 hours or so. Rutgers beating Michigan. Overtime, Maryland knocking off Ohio State in overtime last night. This one has the potential, Jason. I hope you don't have dinner plans. <laughs> well, Rutgers beat Michigan 13-12. Uh, Maryland beat Ohio State 12-11, as, as Mark said. May have, to, may have to skip out on your dinner plans tonight because you might have some extra action. Right now it feels like it. 7-7 seven, seven the score, 7 and white is T.J. Malone for Penn State. Whistle and possession back to Hopkins here. Sam Malone stepped in the crease. There's Malone, so steady typically, leading this Penn State team in goals, assists, and points entering today. Talked about him in the open. Still early stages, third quarter. Hopkins with the goal to tie it after a big save from Marcel. Now they go back to work offensively here. Jacob Angelus in that quarterback role dishes it off. Posey with some heavy checks. So Posey's on English. That means Melendez is free. And another run out by Penn State. Wow. This Penn State defense playing with a renewed sense of energy here in the second half. They got a good rest during the second quarter as they enjoyed the majority of possessions by a wide margin. Have to wonder what the conversation was like for Peter Milliman, the Hopkins coach, and his team. They do have this tied back up now after a 5 nothing start in the opening quarter for Hopkins. What's interesting about when you look at these coaching staffs, defensive coordinator Joe Bucci came from UMBC under the leadership of Ryan Moran. Jamison Kesterer, defensive coordinator for Johns Hopkins, was replaced by Joe Bucci at UMBC. So a couple of retrievers with coaching pedigree out there on the field. And Brian Kelly served as a, an assistant during the 
COVID year, 2021, when he was the then head coach of Goucher at Division III of school in Baltimore when they elected not to play. Jack Schrader fires wide. Ohio State and Maryland left on the schedule for Hopkins. Not easy to close out the final stretch. Again, Hopkins sits atop the conference at 2-0 in Big Ten play. If Penn State were to win this one, it would create a scenario where three teams would be at 2-1 in conference play. Maryland, Hopkins, and Penn State. Could set up a dramatic final couple of weeks in the regular season. Here's Jeff Tambroni, Penn State coach. Talking to his offense coordinator, John Hawes. Big brother to Grant. You know that family very well. I do. Their father, John Hawes Sr., was my ninth grade phys ed teacher at Loyola High School. John was an All-American at North Carolina, also a Loyola High School graduate, and then left Loyola to become the defensive coordinator at Johns Hopkins, and then became the head coach of Washington College, won a Division III national championship, went back to Hopkins, led the Blue Jays to two national semifinals, then coached at his alma mater, North Carolina, now the head coach at Lebanon Valley College in Pennsylvania. I don't know how small the lacrosse world is. Yeah, he's a grandpa now too. John and his wife, uh, Katie Schwartzman Hawes, All-American towards Todd Winter from the University of Maryland, now the director of operations for Penn State. Women's lacrosse had a baby. Hard to, man, it's, it's hard to believe that like, you know, guys that you, <laughs> I remember John Hawes when he was born. You know, coach John Hawes of Penn State, running around the Hopkins track with his brother, and now you look at him, and he's a dad in his own right. John Hawes is a grandpa. <laughs> not getting any younger, buddy. The sport of lacrosse is it a family. That's the voice of Mark Dixon. Jason Ross Jr. with you as well from Panzer Stadium. 7-7 seven, seven game, little under six to go in this third quarter. Matt Schrader patiently maneuvers. Interchanging places there with Will Peden. Now here's TJ Malone. Closed off. Picks the top right corner and Penn State retakes the lead. You can see the reaction from Tim Marcel, not pleased with his defense, but it's so hard to defend number seven, TJ Malone. Hasn't been able to play the last couple of years, but he is making up for lost time with a sensational 2023. Look at the spin back to the left hand. The shot, the bullet, upper 90. Penn State back up by one. Wasn't it? You're never responsible for unauthorized purchases on your Discover card. T-Mobile knows whether you break down in the middle of nowhere or get a flat tire on the edge of somewhere. People everywhere trust AAA to get them back on the road. And AAA trusts T-Mobile to be their exclusive wireless partner. Because T-Mobile covers more highway miles with 5G than anyone. So with AAA's nationwide fleet connected on T-Mobile, the middle of nowhere is a lot closer than you think. T.J. Malone's 23rd of the season for Penn State gives the Nittany Lions the lead back 8-7. to seven. Don't forget, later on, you can get all the news and highlights from around the conference on the Big Show. Comes up at approximately 10.30 Eastern on Big Ten Network. It'll come on after the Men's Hockey Championship. Minnesota and Quinnipiac going at it tonight for a national title in hockey. See if the Gophers can pull it out. 8-7 lead for Penn State at Panzer Stadium. 5.20 to go in this third quarter. Been an excellent game. It has. Hopkins making the faceoff more competitive, but you've got to give a lot of credit to the Penn State wings. And at Jack Posey with the big boy ground ball, getting it upfield, and the Nittany Lions back on offense. 15-3 advantage for Penn State in the faceoff department. 
That certainly helps. They're up a goal. Trailed by five to begin this game. Russell Melendez scored for the first five for Hopkins. We'll see who the possession goes to here. Well, I, have to, I think there's a flag down yep. behind the play that we may have missed. Number 77, Jaronski. 30 seconds for a legal procedure. Penn State man up 30 so seconds. So it's a legal procedure call against Hunter Jaronski as... Hopkins offensive coordinator assistant coach John Crawley speaks to Jaronski in the box. So Penn State goes a man up. They haven't led by two goals this evening. We're, we're seeing Hopkins do some uncharacteristic things tonight. We saw the Brett Martin penalty. Then Jaronski caught that pass to kill the play. Then he flings it to the opposite end of the field. Like, that's just a lack of discipline. I mean, it wasn't a call or anything, Jason, but it just kind of shows that Hopkins is a little jacked up mentally right now. And how about Tim Marcel jacked up with two great saves? Then made an excellent pass to ignite the transition game for Hopkins. On the move, defensive play from behind comes from Matt Trainer. What a job to get back. Jaronski, excuse me, Raposo coming down. Doesn't shoot much, a little too much of a wind-up. Trainer able to catch him with the trail check, but Hopkins does a great job of collecting the ground ball to stay on offense. Here's Angelus, who's been relatively quiet today. Another uncharacteristic place, particularly from him. So the transition is on now for Penn State. Here come the Nittany Lions. A lot to survey and patiently get things set up. Yeah, Angelus double donuts so far here tonight. He is the conductor of this offense. 31 assists coming into the game, averaging just under three assists per game. And he has been held almost ghost-like. The double donuts and then the turnover there. So now leads to an opportunity again, brewing for Penn State. Down the alley shot, they score! First two-goal lead for Penn State, thanks to Jake Warren. The boys are buzzing at Panzer. Angelus just forces it right here. Great stick up. If you're Sam Sweeney with the interception, we go the other way. And this is just too easy. Right down the heart of the Hopkins defense goes Jake Morin. Poor approach, not enough body. And Morin, one-on-one -on -one with Marcio, finds the cage. Morin, sixth goal of the season, back-to-back -back games with goals. Comes from an athletic family. His cousin Gina played softball at Penn State. Garnet Valley, Pennsylvania native gives Penn State their first multi-goal advantage of the evening that's turned tonight here in State College. Peshko, 6'4", 200-pound midfielder from Ontario. Gets it in back of the cage for Angels, who again has had such a relatively quiet evening. Freshman's guarding him too and Alex Ross. Again a little sloppy. Yeah. Another turnover. Second empty possession for the Blue Jays. So after that Derek Degnan goal which I thought would give them a little juice. Give them a little energy. Penn State has countered with two and Hopkins just a little sloppy here in the late stages of the third period. Hopkins has been so balanced offensively this year as well. We've seen so many different players get involved. And while Matt Trainer, he's had such confidence today. 
eluding a few black jerseys, ultimately had it jarred <laughs> loose. Now he's slow to get up, took a big hit. Marcia the, is the one that waxed him. Yeah, they wanted a call, didn't get one. Meanwhile, Marcio's play leads to opportunity for Hopkins. Long game in the bouncer. Look at Trainer walking the dog. Zulik holds him. And look at Marcio. Could have been a cross check. Hands were a little far apart. Was through the chest. No call. We play on. But he saw the opportunity and took it. He did. And that's what good goalies do. You help out your defense. You have an opportunity to make a play. Lay some body. Melendez is looking for another save from Frasiano. Frasiano has settled down after being lit up by Russell Melendez in the first quarter. Now has eight saves for the ball game. Shot clock and game clock virtually identical, Jason. So we'll see if Hopkins elects to play for the last shot. They do have Angelus being guarded by a short stick. This is a favorable matchup for the Blue Jays. That's McVicker watching him. Now Angelus operates behind the cage, gets the switch, was looking at him in front. It was there. There's Degnan, he's already scored once. Excellent defensive play though made by Kevin Parna. Now nine seconds for Penn State. If they can scoop up this ground ball, they do. Jack Trainer on the move with two seconds. Jack Trainer never got a shot off. Nice defense by Bo Zulik. Recognized the situation. New trainer was going to be going to the goal full force. Gave him some space, applied a little pressure, and takes him down. End of three thrilling quarters. One more to go. Stick around for what should be a very fun finish as night has descended in State College. Great one here at Penn State, Panzer Stadium. The Nittany Lions trailed 5 0, and then TJ Malone got involved, scoring different ways, showing his athleticism, his stick skills, his leadership. He's got five points, three goals, and two assists so far in this one. It's our state of success, as always, brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. P.J. E. Malone certainly deserves that recognition tonight. Five-point game for him. His team up two goals. Answering the final quarter of regulation. Naruski wins the faceoff, but can he get out of trouble? That's a nice job paying it into space. Mazzone and Hawley combined for a tough ground ball. That's a huge face-off win for the Blue Jays. And that was the adjustment made by Peter Milliman, opting to go with Matt Naruski to take those face-offs. In the second half, thought we'd see multiple people taking the draws for Johns Hopkins today. That is the case. Let's we'll see if they stick with Naruski the rest of the way. And face-off advantage for Penn State was huge in the second quarter when they stormed back from what was originally a 5-0 deficit. Now the Nittany Lions have their first two-goal edge of the game. Hopkins trying to trim that down. Save from Frasione was a beautiful one. Brennan Grimes with a low-to-low -low offering. Thought he could surprise Frasione, but he got a stick there. Nice job by Peshko. Use that sideline as your teammate. He almost got Hawes pushed out. Malone took a spill, re-emerged quickly. Back up to the turf. Penn State hasn't lost at home this season. They're 4-0 on the home turf. Maybe they don't want to use the term revenge, but their fan base certainly wants revenge for Hopkins having ended their season in the Big Ten Tournament each of the last two campaigns. Here's Winkoff. T.J. Malone, again, three goals, the hat trick, couple of assists as well. Looking in front. Oh, he nearly had assist number three. Marcia. Did he get a piece of it, or did that just go right? He had no shot clock reset, so I think it just went wide. Shot clock's at 22. Jack Trainer. Wink off. Shot clock at 15. Penn State trying to extend this lead. Man does just that.
Before the first shot, Malone had a short stick matchup, and it didn't work out. This time he gets it back and just jukes around the cage. He so that first step for TJ Malone, so explosive. The air apparent, or the air, I should say, to Grant Amet when Amet retired, but injuries sidelined Malone the last two seasons. He's got Amet burst with the goal scoring ability, whereas Amet's burst was meant to free himself to be one of the best feeders college lacrosse has ever seen. Malone has a little bit more of a scoring aspect to his game than the Penn State legend Grant Amet. Largest lead for Penn State now, thanks to Malone's fourth goal of the game. Hopkins coming into this game riding a five game win streak. And they're no stranger to coming back from deficits to win games. It's the longest current win streak in the Big Ten. Fracion, as Mark mentioned, has really settled in. Nice outlet feed to ignite the transition. But when these teams look in the mirror, they kind of see one another. Tough, gritty, coming off of brutal seasons a year ago. Never quit, chips on their shoulder. Who's going to win out tonight? Both with such mutual respect for one another have exceeded preseason expectations. Especially this Hopkins team. Again, currently first in the Big Ten. Good defensive play there. And it's a TJ Malone turnover. But look at, look at Mazzone go for the ground ball. And there's four white jerseys chasing him. Where's the help for Johns Hopkins? The energy level right now for Penn State. They're out matching the Blue Jays. Kind of felt that way since the second quarter. Nifty move to split through traffic there from Jack Trainer. Ultimately, though, coughed it up. Nice job by Carson Brown. Good looking freshman. Out of New Jersey, 6-2, long, being thrown into action due to the unavailability, the injury to Patrick Deans. Brown plays with the long stick. Here's Jacob Angelus. You can expect to see him with the ball more often than not. But again, it's had a quiet evening. Russell Melendez for the Hopkins goals. Inject at five of the Hopkins goals today. Here's Angelus once again. Shot clock at 22 for Hopkins. Angelus tried to get it in back of the cage there. Intentions for Brendan Grimes didn't work out the way he would have liked to. Tipped uh, off of Penn State, so Hopkins retains possession. Grimes again! Underhand delivery trims the Penn State lead to two goals. Big boy goal for Brendan Grimes. Picks the ball up off of the restart and kind of waves Angelus off. He's like, let me go to work. Grimes, a big kid, has played at midfield where he is now, but he's a natural attackman. So he got that short stick matchup and just bullied and bodied his defender. Beautiful shot. And then a big face-off win for Hopkins. They come right back at it. Frasione had to make a, make a save there. Grimes now on a five-game goal streak. At 18 points in his last six games entering today. More good defensive play from the Blue Jays. Russell Melendez on the move. Good line there to rip it free. Now can Hopkins take advantage? Naruski starting to heat up for the Blue Jays. At the faceoff dot. Trying to get on the same page communication-wise here. 9.15 to go in this fourth quarter. Thought this could be a dramatic game, and it's been just that. 
Now is Russell Melendez going to say, let me go to work? Took a bump there, ultimately dropped down. Good defensive work for the Nittany Lions' Jack Posey. Mentioned he had a Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week award earlier this season. And the win over Ohio State for Penn State snapped a two-game mini-skid. That was their first losing streak of the season. Had lost to Maryland prior to the win over Ohio State and had a team meeting after that really paid dividends. That shot finds the back of the net. Second of the night for Garrett Degnan. And it is a big one to now start a little mini run here for Hopkins. They're back within a goal. Big players show up at big moments. And what Hopkins is doing now is they're getting their attack matched up with short sticks. Degnan, a lefty hammer, goes to his weak hand, if you want to call it that. I don't think Frasiot expected the shot. And you can see number 50 in white point to his chest and say, guys, that one was on me. Chase Mullins was able to win that faceoff, expecting about 50-50 between Mullins and Bond today when it came to faceoffs for Penn State. That number is now 16-7 in favor of the Nittany Lions in terms of faceoffs. They're up 10-9. It was a three-goal advantage, trimmed to one. Rinkoff glides in. Matt Trainer had those first two goals for Penn State that ignited the comeback when they were initially down 5 0. Now TJ Malone. Brett Martin watching TJ Malone. Here's that matchup again. And Martin was able to rip it free. Good defense by Hopkins. They're starting to get stops. We mentioned this is a Blue Jay team that will not lie down. And really, neither of these teams will lie down this season as we at times saw a year ago. And that's created and kind of epitomized the matchup that we've watched today. Resiliency from both sides. Now it's Hopkins' turn to be resilient. They've done that. Here's Jonathan Peshko. 7.05 to go. Jacob Angelus. Brendan Grimes, Maryland native. One Maryland native to another. Melendez looking for a lane. Puts it out in front. Oh, Peshko just couldn't quite handle it. Good idea. Just a little out of reach for Peshko. And had he caught that. His only options were either to backhand it or to catch it and let his momentum carry him out of the crease area away from the Penn State defense. Penn State 6-3 and three on the season. Number 8 in the USILA poll. Both teams looking for a big win on their resumes. Hopkins, five-game winning streak on the line. Down a goal, 6.08 to play. Jake Moore, and we've seen him score today. Dishes it back out. Long bounce shot. Went wide left. With both these offenses, heavy on motion, very basketball-esque. Peter Merriman was expecting the up-tempo look today from this Penn State team. Was, they looked like a well-oiled machine in the words of Peter Merriman. They looked great last weekend against Ohio State right here in Panzer. Warren once again a bit and good defense played there from Hopkins. Scott Smith, he talked about how much you admire his work earlier today. One of the better defensive players in the conference. Third good defensive stand for Johns Hopkins. Able to turn them over on the shot clock violation. Now they have to clear. Hopkins so far in this game. Thir excuse me, they've been perfect. 16 of 16. Andrew 
Jaronski, one of the seniors for Hopkins. I think Hopkins, once they get it over the midfield line, they've had some trouble getting it on the offense, a couple of turnovers, but getting it over the midfield. Hopkins now 17 out of 17. Hopkins, the all-time winningest program in college across history in search of win 1,014 all-time today. 136 years of lacrosse at Hopkins. So much history. Angelus peeks over his shoulder, goes behind the cage. The next position out in front. We have a tie game with 4.20 to go. This one will not show up on the stat sheet for Jacob Angelus, but this is a hockey assist for number 23 in black. Look at the attention that he draws. Two guys hits X, then you hit the backside. Brooks English with the finish. Look at the game summary here. We're now deadlocked at 10 apiece. Hopkins jumped out to the 5 nothing lead. Had the place quiet, then Penn State answered back, outscoring Hopkins 7-2 in the second quarter. Really a tale of two quarters to begin this, but resilience from both sides, both coaches. Jeff Tambroni and Peter Milliman, their teams have come to play as anticipated. Hopkins outscoring Penn State thus far in the fourth quarter, 3-1. Nittany Lions winning a big face-off. We'll see what they can cook up here as they try to regain the lead. So many tight games around Big Ten lacrosse just over the past 24 hours or so. Rutgers beating Michigan 13-12 last night in addition to Maryland beating Ohio State 12-11. In store for another tight one here and a fun finish. 3.40 to go in regulation. Matt Costin for Penn State, off to T.J. Malone. T.J. Malone around the pick from Costin. Now thinking about the long delivery, there was Matt Trainer instead dishes back to Malone. Now Costin once more. 30 seconds on the shot clock to the Nittany Lions. 10-10 game. Costin, ground ball, who can find it? Hopkins takes the possession back. Marcel outlets it. I mean, I think you got to give a lot of credit to the Hopkins defense and Alex Mazzone. He's hold, held Jack Trainer to one goal in this game. So we're seeing some of the best defenders, not just in the Big Ten Conference, but in the country. And you look around this conference, Mazzone and Smith from Hopkins, Posey, Penn State, Alex Ross, the freshman, doing a nice job on it, Jacob Angelus, Bobby Van Buren, Ohio State, Ethan Rawl with the long stick at Rutgers. Melendez fires and gives Hopkins the lead back with 2.37 to go. Welcome back, Mr. Melendez. Been quiet since getting his fifth goal. Grimes again with a short stick, dicing him up. Playing behind the goal is Brendan Grimes' strong suit. He cruises up the alley, passes it to Melendez, and Melendez just has different release points. Different shot speeds, too. That one is overhand and beats Frasion. It's kind of like, welcome back to the party that you started. Yeah. Where you been? He's been on, a, been on a drink run. Now he just got back and scores again. Very important ground ball scooped up by Penn State. They try to tie it. Couldn't. That was a golden opportunity. That's one that Trainer is going to probably wish he had back. But Penn State still has possession. They've just got to find a way to crack this Hopkins defense, which all of a sudden has really buckled down here in the later stages of this fourth quarter. There's a bunch shot. We're tied once more. What a game. Wink off this time. The addition in the offseason. These are the moments that he came to Penn State for. Binghamton transfer. 
Nothing special about this, just off the restart. Penn State is whistle ready, and it's all Zulik was a little flat footed, a little sleepy out there. Gave Winkoff way too much room. Jump shot, finds the far post. We're tied up again. We made a wish for a good game and got an 11 11 tie. 2 3 to go in this fourth. Well, Naruski has been a difference maker here in the second half for Johns Hopkins. He's now 6 out of 13 at the faceoff dot. Just under 50% and a whole lot better than Hopkins did in the first half. And even the ones that he's losing, they're still competitive for the Blue Jays. Inside of two minutes to go. Will this one be decided in regulation do we, or do we have extra action coming up? Angeles, there's a big pump right next to him. Meanwhile, ground ball, jarred free. Some aggressive defensive play from the Nittany Lions. Hopkins able to keep possession and stay poised here. Angeles, the senior with 80 seconds to go in regulation. Both these teams have timeouts left. Angeles, goal line extended, put it out in front there. And there's a flag down. I think they're going to get Ross on an off-ball foul against Jacob Angelus. It's going to be unnecessary roughness on, a on Alex Ross. This is potentially a very costly penalty for Penn State. Let's see if we get another look at that. Here it is. No, this was this was a ground ball earlier. But this was so Angelus was standing there, and I don't know if he was trying to cut or set a pick or what, but you heard a collision, and Angelus ended up on the ground. Officials deem that Ross was unnecessary, and Penn State goes to the sin bin for up to a minute. 55 seconds left in regulation. 42 ticks left on the Hopkins man up. 11-11 tie. Matt Pallison, Degnan, and Peshko. And of all up top there, playing catch with one another. Now Peshko goes to work. Melendez, six goals today. 30 seconds left. In regulation, 18 left on the man up opportunity for Hopkins. Look for Degnan. Degnan's 40 in black. There he is. Melendez. Seven seconds left on the man up. 16 ticks left in regulation of this tie game. Good closeout by Posey. Two on the shot clock. Milliman, Peter Milliman was calling for a timeout. The referees did not see nor hear him. He was on the field calling for a timeout. What a change of events. Oh, that shot just went wide from T.J. Malone in the dwindling seconds. What a non-call of a timeout that could have been. Point four, and that'll do it for regulation. 11 to 11 after four quarters of scintillating play. It's appropriate, right? Both of the other Big Ten games this weekend went to extra time. Penn State and Hopkins, they didn't want to be left out. They're saying, hey, we'll finish this off in next goal wins. Would you ask for anything else between these two teams? It has been phenomenal. That's what we expected. Here's that last sequence you were looking at. Running down the shot clock, there you see Peter Milliman calling for, he's on the field, calling for a timeout. And I mean, there's a couple things there. If he gets the timeout, Hopkins, very short time on the shot clock. Do they sub in their defense and just throw the ball into the corner? Do they risk it and maybe whip up a shot and try to score? But... Refs didn't hear it. Refs didn't see it. We played on, and now we're going to overtime. Hopkins has won eight of their last 12 overtime games, Jason. This will be their first overtime game ever under head coach Peter Milliman.
They've won 10 of their last 15 one goal games as well. There is Peter Milliman patrolling the Hopkins sideline. Both sides step back out onto the field to set what's been a dramatic scene at Panzer Stadium on this Saturday night in State College. This will be Penn State's first overtime game of the season. Let's see who comes out with the happier Easter. Hopkins trying to stay atop the Big Ten standings. They've won five in a row. How about the crowds this weekend? Been phenomenal. SHI Stadium was rocking. Ohio State Lacrosse Stadium last night. Picture of beauty and pandemonium right now. Electric. Penn State hasn't lost on this field yet this season. And they're trying to get to two and one in Big Ten play. Big face off here. Ground ball. 50 50. Who can find it? Hawley. Guy has sonar when it comes to ground balls off the face off wing. So now here comes Hopkins offensively. They get the timeout. There's the whistle. Certainly heard it. Now here, Mark, what are you discussing for both sides? Well, for Penn State, you've got to defend. And the conversation is, let's watch out for 40 in black, 31, Russell Melendez, and Brendan Grimes has stepped up here in the fourth quarter with a goal and an assist. So I think they're your three guys that you're most worried about. But you also have to watch Jacob Angelus. He has made some plays here in the fourth quarter as well. So if you're if you're Penn State, you're talking about what you want to do to stop Hopkins from scoring, but you're also taking that next step. Okay, here's what we do if we get, when we get the save, when we get the stop. Let's clear it here. Let's do this. Let's do that. If you're Hopkins, John Crawley, drawing it up, I wouldn't be surprised here to see a, a Matt Collison be in the mix. He's been very quiet here tonight. Great, great range shooter. He could be somebody that Hopkins could call on to get the ball in his stick and let him unleash. He's 16 in black. One of the best freshmen in the country. If you're Hopkins, I think you stay away from Posey. Posey is a, is a beast. And what short are you going to try to two-man game with to get the matchup, to get the favorable matchup? There's Degnan. He scored today. Leads the team in goals. They give it back to him. 3.33 to go in OT. Deadlocked at 11. In this top 10 matchup on a Saturday night. Here's Matt Collison, who you were looking for. Patiently maneuvers behind the cage. Degnan has a short stick on him. 40 in black. Garrett Degnan. Angelus working the two-man game with him. Angelus feeds it to Grimes. I thought that feed was about a half second late. Grimes now out in front. Backs it up. Matt Collison looking for a lane to fire with 255 to go. It's high and wide. Don't mind the shot. He can use that height to his advantage. Hopkins resets. Angelus dishes to that X position. Now out in front, and a good defensive play once again from Penn State. Looked like Alex Ross in there. Frassian with a great save. That was a good take by McDermott. Frassian got low, fought it off. Penn State wins the ground ball. Will they play through or take a timeout? 2.25 to go for the moment, playing through. Sickler is dangerous offensively. He has a goal tonight. Will it be TJ Malone or Matt Trainer? That's who I'm looking at for Penn State to make this play. And you've got to be careful with Winkoff as well. Winkoff just had it 48 in white. And dishes off here to Matt Costin. Costin 
Some nifty footwork. T.J. Malone's over there with him. Now he has it. 1.50 to go inside of the final two minutes. T.J. Malone looking and waiting for the right opportunity. Matt Costin once more. Shadowed in back of the goal. Wink off. Looks out in front. Skips high in the air. What goes up must come down. Ultimately, can Matt Trainer scoop it up? Important ground ball. T.J. Malone has it. Malone to wink off as the shot clock was winding down. Didn't get that off. 1.15 to go. Didn't like that feed inside from Winkoff. Good defense by Hopkins. No timeouts left for the Blue Jays. Each team gets one timeout per four-minute overtime session. So if it's still tied at the end of this four minutes, we'll play another four, and teams will then be given each another timeout. 50 seconds left remaining in this first OT session. There's a chance. Oh, gosh. Third time, Hopkins has not run a shot out and lost possession. Oh, boy. Little sloppy, and Pesco has it right back for Hopkins with 36 seconds to go. Here's Degnan, their best goal scorer this season. Hopkins being patient. I like the decision by Degnan not to try that 30-yard pass. He did have a man available, but had a defender in between him and his target. Melendez, who got the party started today. What a game it's been. Pesco looking to work down the alley. Now Degnan fires! And that's held on to into the stick of Frasion. Excellent save. That'll do it for the first OT session. I told you to cancel or, or, or put a hold on those dinner plans. Put a hold plans. on the dinner plans. Mr. Ross is running late. I took your advice. Degnan gets, Degnan gets the shot he wants, but not the location. High to high, stick side. Frasion gobbles it up. And we continue here in State College. We're going to need some more water. Yeah, we're running <laughs> low, right? Into the second OT we go. 11 to 11. Been phenomenal. We mentioned how tight it's been around the conference of late. Maryland defeated Ohio State in overtime. Rutgers, same story against Michigan, 13 to 12. The Maryland game was 12 to 11. Take a look at it. Ohio State led throughout the ball game. Late Daniel Kelly, a couple goals for the Terrapins, and then what many people are calling glove game around the lacrosse world. Emotions were high, tensions were raised. And in overtime, Braden Erksa is able to beat the Ohio State defense to cap the comeback for the Terrapins as they escape Columbus with a one-goal win. Remind you of the importance of this game. Hopkins looking to keep sole possession of first place in the standings. While Penn State, if they were to win, you'd see Penn State, Maryland, and Hopkins would all be 2-1. and one. Heading into the final couple of weeks of the regular season, which should be dramatic standings-wise in this one. Certainly playing a key role. First multiple overtime game for Hopkins since 2018 when they beat Maryland in triple overtime. The faceoff, Naruski continues to be a pesk. That was a key adjustment from Peter Milliman of Johns Hopkins at the half. Wow. Tough call at the box. It'll be Penn State possession here. Saw their sideline erupt. They wanted a delay of game, but they also wanted the quick restart. And that area around the bench is so hard to get a quick restart because of the subbing in and out. Let's take a look again at this faceoff. Naruski wins it. Great defense by Chase Mullins. Naruski kicks it to the corner. Could have been a push there on Penn State. And I think they called procedure as Naruski was laying on the ball. And the Penn State player couldn't dig it out. Wow, it's... You could have had a push there on the Nittany Lions. 
The procedure call gives the ball to Penn State. The timeout. And now, offensive coordinator John Haas will try to draw up the game winner. 3.37 to go in the second OT. Deadlocked at 11. John Haas, the brother of Grant Haas. His younger brother who plays for Penn State. See Coach Haas drawing things up there. If you're Hopkins defensively here with the strategy. Well, stop. Stop from scoring. Uh, you, you don't want T.J. Malone to beat you. That, I think that's he's public enemy number one if you're Johns Hopkins. But again, you got to look for Collison. I think Collison's trying to feel it, and Degnan. They're the two. I'm sorry. My mind's all twisted. If you're Johns, yeah. If you're if you're if you're if you're Hopkins, you don't want this man beating you. Look for Sickler. I'm, su I'm sorry. Look for Winkoff. Look for Matt Trainer. T.J. Malone puts it out to Winkoff, who lost his stick. That's a procedure against Penn State. Great check. They were looking for Winkoff. That skip pass. They wanted to step down for Winkoff. Hopkins Zulik got his stick in the passing lane, created the loose ball. Dronsky trying to elude past Matt Trainer. And now Hopkins will use their timeout. And each team gets one in each overtime session. Hopkins will try to draw something up here. Yeah, it wasn't, you know, look, you, you, you pass on the push call in overtime. Okay. I don't know if you can make that procedure call then. You know, you, you kind of got to let the guys dig it out. I don't think Naruski was on top of the ball that prohibited anybody from getting to it. Safety issue, potentially, because you had two guys lying down and guys with big sticks in a tiny space against the sideline. But what do they say? Ball don't lie. Hopkins gets the turnover. They're coming down. They'll have an opportunity to win this game in the second extra frame. Now here's where I could talk about Collison, Degnan, etc. This is the moment for them. Those are the key names. Degnan is 40 in black for Hopkins. And he's leading the team in goals. There's the man that they'll try to get it past, Jack Frasione. Came up with some big saves in that first overtime period. Frasion's got 15 on the game. Well, Hopkins goes to work out of the timeout. Pesco puts it downstairs here for Angeles, their QB, operating from behind the cage. No Collison that I'm seeing out there. Shadowed by Alex Ross here. Angeles operates, little two-man game action. Now Degnan over to Brendan Grimes. Grimes moves in, forced wide. Good defensive effort from Jack Posey. Grimes with two and a half to go in this second overtime session. We're looking for Melendez to shoot. He keeps shading out, hoping to get an opportunity at the top of the box. Melendez is 31 in black. Pesco has it now for Hopkins. Ten on the shot clock for Pesco. He turns, trying to get a shot off and put it. Round ball is scooped up. Well, there's Melendez, one more big. Fasione the save. Hopkins in the crease. Not the worst shot in the world by Melendez, but he had Degnan. The one more to the big lefty, I think, could have ended this. So now it's Penn State's turn. Timeouts are done. Both teams have exhausted their one timeout per overtime session here in the second OT session. Matt Trainer had the first couple of goals today for Penn State. It's knocked down there while Jaromski reemerges, drops it off, wink off. Matt Costin drifting, wink off once more. TJ Malone, such a big player for this Penn State team. 1.15 to go in OT number two. 
And back of the goal. TJ Malone once more on the interchange. Malone searching for options. Fed it out in front. Out of the reach of Matt Trader. And Marcio selling out. What a great shot. Oh, no. Opportunity for Penn State. Wins it. Wins it. Kevin Winkoff gets rid of the thorn that has been in the side of Penn State, also known as Johns Hopkins. And Penn State wins it in OT. This will be a tough one to swallow for Johns Hopkins. Kevin Winkoff. Jeff Tambroni told us this week that the transition to Penn State hasn't been the easiest, but he kept with it. The coaches kept faith in him, and he gets the game winner. And look at Jack Frassion receiving congratulations from his teammates. 16 saves. Zolik didn't look. Malone intercepts it, and Winkoff steps down. Marcel hadn't faced a shot in about 15 minutes real time, and he can't catch up to the heat and velocity of Winkoff. What a game. Took two overtime sessions to decide it. But ultimately, Penn State snaps their skid against Johns Hopkins and comes up with a huge victory at home to remain unbeaten on this field. What a game. Terrific game. What a way to close out the weekend. Hopkins, we knew they were going to fight, came back from a three-goal fourth-quarter deficit, had opportunities to win the game in overtime. But Penn State, they're the ones that make the play. And walk away with the victory. A deflating loss for a Hopkins team that jumped out to a 5-0 lead to begin this game. But a Penn State team that is so much different than a season ago from a maturity standpoint. That's what we talked about with their head coach Jeff Tambroni. Miles of maturity in comparison to this time last year. And that certainly played itself out on their home field tonight. It really did. Smiles all around. Such a tough year for Penn State in 2022. And you're looking at two guys that are certainly in the conversation for Big Ten Coach of the Year, but I also think that they'll be in the conversation if their teams continue to have success for National Coach of the Year. Two of the biggest turnarounds in men's Division I lacrosse. Their teams fight hard, never give up. We saw that here tonight. Penn State just made that one play. Got that one shot that you need to go. And TJ Malone takes the interception, feeds Wink off, unselfish, and the Binghamton transfer closes the curtains. We'll have Kevin Winkoff coming up here for what should be a, a fun shot after an incredible win and winner for his team. So we'll have him momentarily as you see the two head coaches embrace so much mutual respect for one another as we now welcome in Kevin Winkoff. Kevin, congrats on the win. Incredible game. You can see the emotion and exhaustion on your face yeah. simultaneously. Walk me through that final sequence that ultimately won it for your side in the second overtime. Yeah, I mean, every time we had the ball, I thought we were going to end it. And defense played a heck of a job. Jack Frasione and Net played unbelievable. Got us the ball, and I, I, I was confident in our offense. 
You weren't here last year, Kevin. You transferred in from Binghamton, but you knew the team was coming off a tough 2022. That included a season-ending loss to Johns Hopkins. What uh -huh. does this win mean to Penn State lacrosse for the 2023 version? Yeah. Listen, people have been riding this team off since last year. I know last year we went 3-11, and uh, 11, but every game was real close. So I had a lot of faith in this team coming here. I knew we had a lot of potential. So this year, every time we, we beat a team that's a little higher than us and they say it's an upset, we in our locker room we know it's not. So I'm proud of the guys, and we're moving on. That was not an easy or close-in shot that you canned for the game winner. What gave you the confidence <laughs> to take it? Sometimes in the last seconds like that, you kind of just black out, and I just caught the ball, and I just let it rip. Well, thanks, Kevin. Really appreciate your time. Congrats on the win. Go celebrate. Thank you. I will. Kevin Winkoff scores the game winner in the second overtime. Now the Penn State students can take joy and pride in it. Ending their losing skid to Hopkins and getting the two and one in Big Ten play. This was fun. Great Marcus game. pleasure. Top, top to bottom. Big Ten top lacrosse conference as strong as ever. What a treat. We've seen it in the last 24 hours or so with three overtime games. Penn State wins this one in double OT for our awesome crew. Mark Dixon, I'm Jason Ross Jr. saying so long.